Nonlinear chromatography, or TLC, is an analytical technique in chemistry used to separate the components of a solution containing different compounds into the individual compounds by using their differences in polarity and thus solubility. The TLC method consists of a stationary phase, which is an aluminum plate coated with silica on one side, and a mobile phase, the solvent, in which the bottom edge of the plate is immersed. The plate is spotted with a reference solution containing a known mixture of substances, which is the control, as well as a spot for the unknown compound. The solvent is allowed to travel up the plate, almost to the top edge. When it almost reaches the top, the plate is pulled from the TLC chamber, and a mark is made where the solvent has stopped. By developing the plate by various methods, depending on which substances are being tested for, we can detect how far the spots have traveled up the plate relative to the solvent being used. Then we use the formula, which is the distance traveled by the spot divided by the distance traveled by the solvent to calculate what is known as an RF value, or retention factor value. In this case, our solvent is a mixture of butanol, glacial acetic acid, and distilled water in the ratio of 12 parts butanol, 3 parts glacial acetic acid, and 5 parts distilled water. I will perform a thin layer chromatography test and use this to figure out which amino acids have been produced by my Miller-Urey experiment. Okay, YouTube, so um, here we are. Uh, we're going to do a, a thin layer chromatography now. This is our sample from the Miller-Urey experiment, my uh, sample that I extracted. And this is our reference solution. It's a little bit orange, but uh, that will clear out once we uh, add it to our plate. And actually, I uh, took the liberty of uh, doing that step. And so this is the completed plate. Uh, as you can see, we have it marked um, A and B. A is the um, for the reference solution, and B is for our unknown. And I took uh, one of these capillary tubes, and I immersed it in the in the reference solution first. And I spotted the plate on A. Spotted the plate on A, and then I also um, took another capillary tube. I immersed it in our uh, in our test solution and I spotted that plate on the number or the letter B and so this is the completed plate with the spots and the spots have been allowed to dry and so now we're going to uh, start the next part of the test which is we're going to uh, fill the chamber with solvent and we're going to immerse our plate in the solvent okay now that we have the chamber filled with our solvent, which is uh, right here. This is our solvent. We're going to uh, immerse the plate, the bottom edge, and we're going to quickly uh, uh, seal the chamber. Just like so. Okay. And that should be good. We're going to do that, and uh, we will come back when the uh, when the solvent reaches the uh, top of the plate. Okay. Well, I think it's about time to, uh, to pull the plate out of the solvent mixture. Uh, the plate is, uh, rather, the solvent front is almost uh, to the level that I want. So we're going to pull the plate, and we're going to. Uh, very quickly draw a line uh, across the solvent front so that it doesn't evaporate. Very quickly we're going to draw a line uh, using our mechanical pencil. And um, from that we will be able to calculate the RF value. Okay, so
So there is our plate with the uh, line drawn across the solvent front. And uh, so we will let this dry and we will be able to calculate our RF values. Um, I have to spray the plate with ninhydrin in order for the amino acid lines to show up. But um, basically we're done with the test. And so I will be sharing the results pretty soon. I just want to state up front that the results of this test were very disappointing. Okay, so here you can see the very dark spots on the left, which are the spots left by the reference solution. After doing this test three separate times, I was only able to get these faint yellow spots from my test solution. And as you can see, the faint yellow spots are all over the place. I was just trying to get some kind of result that I can report. The RF value was calculated for the faint yellow spots and it was found to be 0 0.25. This RF value could be one of two possible amino acids. Here is a table of all of the potential amino acids which my solution could contain. As you can see, the two most likely candidates for my test sample are glycine and serine. Because the solvent is mostly made up of butanol, which tends to be on the borderline of solubility in water, and because glycine is the most prevalent amino acid which is produced in these experiments, I would say that the amino acid which I have produced in this Miller-Urey experiment is more likely to be glycine. I don't know why no other amino acids show up in my analysis, but it seems very likely that I have produced glycine here. Anyway, I just want to thank all of my subscribers and others for watching this video, and um, I will be uh, replicating this experiment again to try to get a more conclusive result. So thanks for watching.